my clock. I can't stop. Fuck around, make my 40 pop. Needless to say, the chapter was absolutely fire. Start off with Ishigo Tzuki, the actual Ishigo Tzuki versus Akash and Koji. And one of the biggest surprises of this chapter is that Akash and Koji actually utilized Sage Mode. Now, I do want to point this out, make this very clear. It's not a surprise that Akash and Koji actually has Sage Mode, but a surprise that he actually used it. Man, because it's like a pipe dream that everybody just wanted to see. And I explained that in my last video, but regardless, he actually used Sage Mode in this chapter. But coming out of the gate, one of the most useful things that we could have taken away from the early part of this chapter is of course how Ishigo Tsugi is going to fight mainly because this is probably not the last time that we see Ishigo Tsugi fight and the next time that we see Ishigo Tsugi fight is probably going to be against some of the characters that we hold near and dear to our hearts so seeing Ishigo Tsugi in this chapter is going to be very critical now a couple of things that I do want to say Ishigo Tsugi in this chapter looked like he was absolutely playing around with Kashin Koji now I do not want to downplay Kashin Koji's power Kashin Koji's strength and of course how good Kashin Koji is in my opinion I think that this Kashin Koji is way stronger than the regular dry and this Kashi Koji the Sage Mode dry can possibly even rival some Otsuzuki members but it's just the fact that Ichigo Tsuki is just that good. What we understand is that Ichigo Tsuki in this chapter it made Kashi Koji look like an absolute child and he didn't necessarily use a lot of the moves that he was actually utilizing. Now when I first saw this was about this chapter I thought it was super weird that Kashi Koji was actually using Jutsus. What we established from previous chapters is the fact that Ichigo Tsuki has the ability to absorb chakra. He did not necessarily do that in this chapter. Now what I really do not want to do is that I don't really want to rush to conclusions because he did not absorb chakra in this chapter does not mean that he lost the ability to absorb chakra after he completed his Otsuzuki transformation I think one of the more realistic things that we could possibly assume for this character Ichigo Tsuki is that he probably just wanted to test out his abilities I know this is like a cliche thing to do but especially with villains when they get a new form they usually like to test out their abilities see how strong they are and see how comfortable they are using this new form now in the case with Ichigo Tsuki of course we understand that it's not a new form this is just his regular form but using context clues Ishiko Tsuki hasn't been in this form for over a thousand years which is absolutely insane so of course I don't know someone immediately jumps to the conclusion that he does not have the ability to absorb chakra but we do have to point out that he didn't really absorb chakra in this chapter now another thing that I do want to point out is that he didn't necessarily use the rod one of Ishiko's go-to when he was in the body of Jigen is that he used to always pop up these rods which would impale his enemy that tactic right there was extremely useful and almost mitigated the ability for characters to use Taijutsu it damn near made it impossible because the characters could not necessarily detect the rods coming up out of nowhere but instead of rods Ishiki did the same thing on a much larger scale and he had huge beams just appear out of nowhere and then just completely crush Kashi and Koji so again it could be the storyline of Ishiki kind of playing around with Kashi and Koji and not really trying to show him everything just so he could test out his overall power and I think Ishiki still being able to impel his enemies with rods is much more tangible than Ishiki still being able to absorb chakra mail because we've seen Ishiki still use the ability in this chapter it just wasn't with rods Ishiki's dojutsus were a very big topic after the last chapter of Boruto and of course we didn't really get to see exactly what he did but in this chapter right here it seemed like we know a little bit of what it can do now at a glance he can pretty much shrink anything he shrank flames pretty much all the time in this chapter when Kashi and Koji was trying to hit him with it and that could low-key be even more effective than just flat out absorbing chakra because he could just have full jutsus disappear in a blink of an eye which is absolutely insane and not only that Ishiki also talked about a dimension where time stops and he could pretty much make things appear out of that dimension whenever he wants he did that with the beams and he did that with the wine and of course with the wine i think that ichigo Tsuki was just trolling at that point but the writers pretty much added that in to explain to us exactly what's going on now just that ability right there could be absolutely broken we have no idea what's in that other dimension it could possibly be jutsu it could possibly be more rods it could possibly be more beams it could possibly be anything so in terms of what these characters could possibly try to defend themselves against facing ichigo Tsuki is pretty much infinite at this point the writers could literally pull out anything from that other dimension and to remind you guys we're not just talking about tangible things like beams or rods if you guys do recall Kashi and Koji summoned full on flames to burn Jigen it's possible that Ishigo Tsuki also has something like that in that other dimension it's possible that Ishigo Tsuki possibly has like I don't know a thousand Rasengas like that in the other dimension specifically not the Rasengas because you know, we understand that's probably highly unlikely but you guys get my point there could be anything in that other dimension a lot of people have been speculating about Ishigo Tsuki's dojutsu and giving out possibilities of what Ishigo Tsuki might actually have such as wish granting and other things such as that 
I'm not gonna say that's out the window as of right now, mainly because we didn't see in this chapter, but it is a less likely chance that he does have the other abilities that some other YouTubers talked about, but it's definitely not definitive that Ichigo Dugi does not have these other abilities and he just has this shrinking ability. Again, all the respect to Kaj and Koji. I think that Kaj and Koji is a very amazing character. And of course his story is not over because he did not die, but in terms of actual fighting skills up against a character like Ichigo Dugi, I think that he did not necessarily have a chance. And in my opinion, I don't think that Naruto and Sasuke have a chance. Now during the battle and especially after the battle, there's a little bit of confusion on Kaj and Koji's side about who he actually was and what his mission was actually supposed to be. Now Ichigo Dugi was telling him straight up like, yo, you were a tool, you were made to be a sacrificial pawn, your job is already over. Now I'm just gonna kill you right here because you can't not necessarily beat me. And of course, I think that Kaji Koji in his heart of hearts understood that he probably just didn't want to come to that conclusion. And Ichigo Dugi brought up that possibility as well. Now that's very confusing to me, man, because early in the manga, it seemed like they had an understanding that that was going to be the situation. Kaji and Koji basically started off the fight with saying that he's a tool. Kaji and Koji literally started off the fight saying that he's a shinobi and he's just being utilized like a weapon would be utilized. So I thought that Kaji and Koji completely understood. And not only that, I thought that Kaji and Koji and Amado had a built-in backup plan that Kaji and Koji will also be rebuilt in the hidden leaf village if he does or when he does actually die versus a character like Ishiko Dzuki. Now if you guys do recall back in chapter 44 the setting is where Kachin Koji was headed to where Jigen was and Amada was headed to where the hidden leaf was. Kachin Koji basically asked Amada like hey that's all you're taking it doesn't look like much. Amada responded he said I only need one section of the cell fragments and the digitalization data aggregate. The work itself can be done using their equipment. Then Kachin Koji said very well and then he pretty much left. Now at that point I thought what he was talking about is that the cell fragments that he had was Jiraiya's cell fragments. Then of course, if he had Jiraiya's cell fragments, he can create another Kashin Koji. And at that point, Kashin Koji probably understood that he was probably gonna die in a battle versus Jigen or Ishigo Tsuki, but that was not the case. It turns out that Kashin Koji probably thought that he was gonna make it out alive. It turns out that Kashin Koji could have possibly actually been backstabbed by Amato. And this also brings up the question of if the Hidden Leaf right now can I actually still trust Amato, not only because he planned this extremely poorly, but because at this point, Ishigo Tsuki is probably gonna run wild and we have no Way of stopping of course sasuke and naruto are there but they lost against jigen it's going to be a very difficult scene where they do actually have to face the big blood the actual real guy ishigil tzuki and not only that what was amato talking about with the cell fragments what is he planning on building in the hidden leaf village these are a bunch of questions that we do not necessarily have the answer to as of right now and i'm not gonna lie to you guys the conspiracy of amato basically turning on everybody is very large as of right now i want to make a separate video basically detailing and breaking down exactly what amato could possibly be doing and how he could possibly be playing the hidden leaf village as we speak now on a separate topic i want to touch on this a lot more in a separate video but i do want to kind of hint at it at the end of this video i do want to talk to you guys about this it seems like Sasuke and Naruto are actually going to be trying to fight Ishigo Tsuki. I heard something very scary. I don't know. Sasuke told Boruto that him and Naruto are willing to die for the Hidden Leaf Village. I get that. I understand that. But we have to understand. Ishigo Tsuki's concern isn't the Hidden Leaf Village. Ishigo Tsuki isn't trying to destroy the Hidden Leaf Village. Ishigo Tsuki is just trying to get quacky. All we have to do is run from the guy. And it seems like Naruto and Sasuke are playing to actually fight against Ishigo Tsuki. Now, I understand it's probably going to be a sad scene if Ishigo Tsuki does actually get Kawaki. Kawaki was a fan favorite. We understand that Kawaki is the best friend of boards. So they're like brothers down. And Naruto gave Kawaki his word like, hey, I'm going to protect you, things like that. But let's be realistic. At this point, Ishigi Otsuzuki can do a lot of damage. And I'm not, I'm not even just talking about Naruto and Sasuke. I'm talking about the overall village. At this point, I think the most smart thing to do is either run, either hide, or just surrender Kawaki right then and there, point blank period. Ishigo Tsuki can care less right now about Sasuke and Naruto and what their plans are for in the future. All he's worried about right now is Kawaki. And I think because of that, we have no need to actually engage Ishigo Tsuki. He's a powerhouse right now. We can't really fight him right now. And because of that, we need to start planning long term. We can't make any irrational decisions. And Sasuke and Naruto attempt to fight Ishigo Tsuki at the top of the Hidden Leaf Village is an irrational decision. We need to take a step back and plan, possibly let Kawaki get the carmen still, let Ishigo Tsuki do whatever he wants to do with Kawaki, but take a step back 
and plan and figure out exactly what needs to happen. But let me know what you guys think about this chapter in the comment section below. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, this chapter was a very good one. I talked about how it was probably gonna be one of the most unpredictable chapters that we have seen in a long time. And it was definitely very unpredictable. Coming to this chapter, we didn't know what Ishiko Tsuki's dojutsu were gonna do. We didn't know how much more powerful he'd be. We didn't know if Amado would become a citizen of the Hidden Leaf Village. We didn't know that Kashi Code is gonna use Sage Mode. A whole bunch of things that did happen in this chapter that we didn't really expect. And for that, I really am so grateful this chapter but let me what you guys think about this chapter in the comment section below it's me your boy barbie and we out it's a knife